If any man lacks wisdom, many of us ask God for a plethora of things, to be blessed with children, a good job, a new house, and or good health. In and of itself, none of these things are sinful or wrong. But how many of us sincerely ask him for wisdom, patience, forbearance, or to be drawn nearer to our precious Savior? In all of our requests, it is quite possible to forget the one thing needful. Just like unbelievers, we are tempted to set our minds on things below instead of things above. We suffer from the same malady as every other person who has been born into the sinful world. We are born with the sinful gene of Adam from the original sin, which is the cause of this wretched state. We as Christians must fight against and resist our sinful nature for the entirety of our lives until we are translated into the greater presence of the Father. In this gene, every sin known to man is present, including selfishness, anger, and ungodliness, lust, and even murder. As Christians, we must put our wants and dreams on the back burner and follow the word of the Savior in Matthew 6.33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Does this mean we can't dream or make plans for the future? God forbid. We, of course, dream, make plans, and make ready ourselves for opportunities. But it is not to be the focal point of our existence. 1 Corinthians 10.31 For man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Many of us define ourselves first by our profession. We live for it rather than Christ. We count ourselves righteous by making our children or our spouse the primary reason we exist. Many times the Savior is at the bottom of this list or doesn't make the list at all. We, in a sense, have made he who bled and suffered the pains of death a side dish on our table instead of our main course. As Christians, we must not neglect nor capitulate to the world's philosophy. Do whatever makes you happy or live your best life now because life is short. For the unbelievers, this is true for their best life is now. For when they die, they will be cast into the lake of fire. But as Christians, we have a heavenly place made just for us by Jesus. He says so in John 14, 3. So I say to you today, seek God first. Ask God's will to be done in every aspect of your life and graciously surrender to him everything. For he opens doors no man can shut and shuts doors no man can open. As Christ made the ultimate sacrifice for us, God in turn asked us to sacrifice for him at times. Our needs, our wants, or even our very lives. He might require more from you than the person sitting next to you in the pew. You may never have your dream job, dream spouse, or the children you pine for so desperately. You may experience sickness or a devastating loss of a loved one. Your entire life, you might struggle financially. 
But through all these things, God is with you in the midst of life's storms. You may ask God daily, why me? And it may never be revealed until you stand before God in heaven. The world teaches us to look at the provision instead of the provider. Even the Christian church at times call he who is rich blessed and he who is poor less esteemed in God's eyes. As if poverty is a divine punishment. Yet our most blessed Savior was born to a humble carpenter and his virgin wife and they were poor. What God does promise us is our daily bread and the richness of a life lived in Christ. He promises never to leave or forsake us. He promises to come again for his saints. He promised us his Holy Spirit and he delivered on it the day of Pentecost. But the most important promise he made was fulfilled over 2,000 years ago when he sent his only begotten son to be the propitiation, the vicarious atonement that satisfied the wrath of God and his righteous judgment, freeing us from being, freeing us from the penalty of a righteous God and giving us the gift of eternal life. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding continue to keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. My name is Adam Christian. This is Trusting God in the Dark Christian Podcast. Until we speak again, God bless you.